Hello everybody, good morning. This is All The Things and welcome to another book review. Today I got an interesting one for y'all and that is Gods at War by Kyle Eidelman. Okay, so obviously I read this on my Kindle. Dude, these are good. They save a lot of space. And one of the things I like about the Kindle, on top of the fact that you take all the books with you wherever you go, um, you like highlight stuff in here and then it'll like uh, create a list for this book. Here's all the different things you highlighted. So it's like a little note script. And then there's even a function in here where you can like uh, go through all the stuff from all the books that you've highlighted. So it's like all the interesting things, I guess, that you you saw. So it's it's kind of a cool thing that you can take notes just by like poking something and then move on. But um, anyways, on to this book. Uh, this book is called Gods at War. As you can see, I don't know if you can read that. It's kind of artsy font. But um, this book is about um, kind of some faith-based stuff. I would say some religious stuff. It was referred to me um, by somebody like in a group, a chat group that I talk with. And it's... Um, I would say it, it does very heavily look at something from a Christian perspective, but even if you're not a Christian, I would say that the idea in here is really interesting, and uh, even though it pulls a lot from the Christian theology, like pulls, pull, 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 pull. Um, I don't know, I think uh, there's good ideas in every branch of everything, um, and just because something falls under a certain genre doesn't make it good or bad, I think that the work itself really speaks for itself. So let's hop into it. Anyway, so, uh, Gods at War is about, uh, really what is in control of your life. And ultimately, this book, at the end, it's kind of saying, like, God should be in control of your life. Um, but throughout the book, it's talking about other common things that people let control their lives. And it does it under this context of idol worshiping. And, um, like, if you read the Bible, or if you know some of the stories from the Bible and stuff, idol worshiping traditionally was like, uh, oh, I got a statue, and then I, like, worship it, and they're like, hey, bring me luck and stuff. But, um, a lot of times nowadays, we don't think of, uh, ourselves as idol worshipers, because we don't, like, have statues around that we're, like, worshiping and sacrificing to and stuff like that. Um... And I think, to that point, there's a really interesting show that I've never watched before, so disclaimer on that, but it's called American Gods. And I think it kind of plays to this point of we have modern-day things that we worship that we may not think that we're worshiping. And this book, uh, Gods at War, talks about um, what could possibly be um, idols in your life that are causing you not to live your best life. And some of the idols, to give you an example, are like money. Um, acceptance, um, entertainment, um, me, like I think I'm the best and I need to like praise myself and stuff like that. And it talks about different situations or different examples or different reasons why um, putting something on a really high pedestal in your life may cause you to uh, not live your best life. And from that point of view, I think anybody of any religion I think could benefit from, from this kind of perspective where it talks about things that can easily get control of your life if you're not careful. And what's interesting is it goes over and over and over with uh, what I got out of this book. There's a, a kind of a theme where whatever idol you choose, uh, you know, pick your poison kind of thing, at the beginning, the idol, from, from this book's point of view, it doesn't really seem to be that bad. It doesn't seem to be something that you'll become addicted to or something that will own you, but you, you slowly step more and more into it and there's a point where it flips over and you become owned by it. Like you think you own it, you think you own it, but then all of a sudden it owns you. And so maybe like, uh, like it's money and you've been broke your whole life or you've had money insecurity so you work really hard to get money and you do a lot and you do a lot and you get money but then there becomes a point where you have enough money but for some reason you can't stop making more and more money and that's like the point where you don't control the money the money controls you why do you need more money and there could be good reasons i'm not saying that making more money is bad but uh i think what this book really in from my perspective highlights is consciously and constantly remembering why you're doing something. And a lot of times when we drill down under 
the fake reasons that we tell people to sound good in society why we're doing something. It's because we're insecure. It's because we think the thing that uh, we're pursuing will protect us or it'll provide us security or it'll uh, fulfill us. Um, like certain people think a relationship will fulfill them. Certain people think that money will fulfill them. Certain people think that a job title, if you know, if I could be my own boss, if I could have enough money in the bank, if I could uh, have a wife, if I could um, get my kids to college, if I could get to college, then I, I would be happy. And it's this idea where, um, from this book's point of view, it says you're not really going to be happy until that thing that's on the pedestal is God. But um, even just having that idea where there's a pedestal, and if if you're not intentful about what you put on that pedestal, something is going to get placed on that pedestal just by the actions and the stuff that happens in your life. And then you're going to start worshiping something that you may never have wanted to. So, um, you know, be mindful in what you do, be mindful in what you give your attention to, and the people that you keep in your company and stuff like that. So uh, that part, I think, is super mega universal. I think it's an interesting way to look at it. And then from like the Christian perspective, because this is talking about um, like, uh, thou shalt not worship any god before me. I think that's one of the Ten Commandments. Um, it made an interesting uh, phrase, supposition, whatever you want to call it. Where he was saying, like, if you look at the Ten Commandments, I'm mean, like, you know, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh, there's some other ones. Um, but the idea in this book is that every one of the Ten Commandments uh, is a warning against some form of idolatry. And it's like, um, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery is... Uh, like placing lust as your idol, like you're worshiping the physical experience and the pleasure and stuff like that. Um, and it was saying like this is this is kind of the heart of it. And if you can if you can really really get into this, and it gives all these biblical examples, which I think is cool. Like if you're gonna like go out right and say like you know you're kind of like based on a Bible book, give some Bible examples. That makes sense to me. Um, it gives a bunch of examples how in the Bible people kind of fall astray by worshiping things like money, worshiping things like sex, worshiping things like uh, relationships or status. And uh, you may read it from a point of view where you're like, oh, this is um, thou shall not covet or something like that. But really, this jealousy is stemming from, um, I don't know, like an insecurity. And the insecurity has to do with me being the prettiest. I need to be the pretty or the most handsome person. And I'm jealous because I'm not being treated as the most important. And that's like, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's me placing myself at like a really high level when um, maybe that's not the best thing for me to do. And I think that comes in with like pride and stuff like that. So um, I think there's a lot of ways to look at this book. It's very simple to read. I don't remember any pictures. So um, on that, I really love books with pictures, as you know, if you watch my channel. But um, I think it's a good book, whether or not you're Christian, whether or not you're religious. Um, I think a lot of times we lose the opportunity to learn something good because it's packaged in a way we don't like or that we're not comfortable or familiar with. I think if it's good stuff and it's presented well, you know, there could be good country songs, there could be good rap songs, there could be good classical music songs. I don't really care what genre it's from. I care that it's good music. And just like this with this book, it could be a religious book, it could be a philosophy book, it could be a story book, it could be a picture book. Um, but does it have good content? And I think this book does have good content, and um, if you read it and you're looking to learn, if you're looking to be open and you're looking to I don't know, seek to improve your life, I think this book can give you tools, it can give you perspectives, but um, I think if you're like, I don't, I'm not a Christian, or I don't believe that, so I'm not going to learn from that, um, which is a perspective you can have, uh, then I think you'll get less out of it or probably never read the book. But um, the book is fairly short. Let me see if I can get my Kindle to tell me. Uh, I'd say it's probably this big. I think you could read it in a week. Um, it's not that complicated. 
Uh, I like how it gives examples. Um, there was this one about this girl that was like going to move out when she was like 18 with her boyfriend. And then um, there was this dialogue that she had with the writer of this book, who is a pastor. Um, and he was talking about like, well, is moving out with this boy right now going to affect your future relationships? Or um, is it going to affect your relationship with your husband? And he was saying that like, not even considering this boyfriend as your husband, but what you're going to do in that relationship, how you're going to be treated, how you're going to come out of that relationship, is that fair to gain all that and then have your husband deal with that? And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Like looking ahead, looking to the future and saying, maybe I should invest in myself now and not do things to hurt me now just because I want pleasure and all this kind of stuff or I feel like it's right. Maybe I should look for the long term. And so it has, I think it has a lot of different directions that it goes in. Um, ultimately, I thought it was a pretty simple read. I got some things out of it myself. It uh, gave me a really interesting look at idolatry. Previously, um, when I looked at the Ten Commandments, I looked at them all through the the, vin, the lens, uh, the lens of stealing. Like all of them sound like some form of stealing to me. Like thou shalt not murder. That's like stealing someone's life. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That was like stealing someone's truth. Um, and so uh, thou shalt not bear. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's like uh, stealing someone's trust. But this book, this book looks at it from terms of uh, idolatry, and I thought that was interesting. Maybe you can look at the whole Ten Commandments as one commandment, depending on how creative you are. I haven't gotten that far, but uh, the book is Gods at War. I'm gonna bring the title back up. Bam, Gods at War. Where's the guy's name? Kyle Eidelman. Um, that was a pretty good book. Um, wasn't the most groundbreaking epiphany book of my life, but had some good points. And I don't know if you like it, read it. If this is interesting to you, read it. But if not, that's on you. So this has been All the Things with another book review. Thank you for joining me. I hope you guys like these book reviews. If you do, give it a like. Give it a subscribe, maybe. And uh, help me share these with other people in case uh, you want to encourage people to read, which is what I'm trying to do. Please read books. Books are great. I approve of books. Please read them all the time. But anyways, this has been all the things. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time for the next book.